Understanding Modal Verbs, an Introduction Hello and welcome to our English language learning video series. In this episode, we will be diving into the fascinating world of modal verbs. Specifically, we'll be exploring the topic of introduction to modal verbs. So, let's get started and unravel the mysteries of modal verbs together. Modal verbs are a unique category of verbs in English that play a crucial role in expressing various degrees of possibility, necessity, ability, permission, and more. They add depth and nuance to our language, allowing us to convey specific meanings and attitudes. Modal verbs are different from regular verbs in that they have their own rules and structures. The most common modal verbs in English are can, could, may, might, must, shall, should, will, would. Modal verbs have certain characteristics that distinguish them from other verbs. Let's take a closer look at these features. 1. No, s, in the third person. Modal verbs do not take the usual s, ending in the third person singular. For example, we say, he can, not, he cans. 2. No infinitive or base form. Modal verbs are not followed by the infinitive, to, or the base form of another verb. Instead, they are directly followed by the base form of the verb that comes after them. For instance, we say, I can swim, not, I can to swim. 3. Lack of tenses. Modal verbs do not have a full range of tenses. They remain the same regardless of the subject or the time frame. However, we can express different time frames by using other supporting verbs in combination with modal verbs. 4. Absence of do for questions and negatives. In questions and negatives, we don't need to use the auxiliary verb do when modal verbs are present. We simply invert the modal verb and the subject or add not to create negatives. For example, can you swim? And she may not go. Modal verbs are used to express a variety of meanings and functions. Let's explore some of their common uses. 1. Ability and possibility. Modal verbs such as can, could, may, and might are used to indicate someone's ability to do something or the possibility of an event occurring. For example, I can swim and it may rain tomorrow. 2. Obligation and necessity. Modal verbs like must and should express obligations, requirements, or a sense of necessity. For instance, you must study for the exam and she should be here by now. 3. Permission and prohibition. Modal verbs such as may, can, and could are used to grant or seek permission, while must not and should not indicate prohibition. For example, may I borrow your pen? And you must not smoke here. 4. Advice and recommendations. Modal verbs like should and ought to are employed to give advice, suggestions, or recommendations. For instance, you should exercise regularly and we ought to be more environmentally conscious. Remember, these examples only scratch the surface of the vast applications of modal verbs. Throughout this series, we will explore each modal verb in more detail, uncovering their specific nuances and usage patterns. Congratulations! You have successfully completed the Introduction to Modal Verbs section. You now have a solid understanding of what modal verbs are 